So if you've been wondering how to make those fabric styling boards that are two-sided and they roll up and they're just fabulous and they're also like a hundred dollars piece, you're in the right place. My dog. I forgot to put her out. Oh well, whatever. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are making two-sided styling boards with fabric. This is the gray side, this is the black side, and they are sewn together. A few things before we get started. You will need a sewing machine and a few things. I'll list them below. But it's, I, I say these are easy. This one is not as easy as the last two that I showed you, but it's still pretty easy. It is easier if you do have a serger, but I know who has a serger these days. I have one. I got it from a garage sale from, from like 2006 for 50 bucks and it's still working, but I wanted to demonstrate with a sewing machine because no one has a serger anymore. It's a granny thing. If you have a granny with a serger, just borrow hers. So let's talk about fabric. You're going to need at least one thin fabric. And when I say thin, I mean something that is not stiff like upholstery fabric. So if you go to Hobby Lobby or Joann's and they have those big old bolts of, like they're like the ones and they're on the roll and you have to call somebody to come cut you off some, you can only have one of those. Because we will be using Wonder Under, which is this really nifty, fusible thing that goes in between two fabrics to make them fused together. And if you use two thick pieces of material, the heat won't be able to get to the, the wonder under. And so you'll just have two pieces that won't go together. I like using a linen blend. I don't like using pure linen because it is so wrinkly and it just shows every little imperfection. Um, if this is your first time using wonder under, you're gonna need something that is forgiving, like these, this right here, something that has texture is good. Velvet is also very forgiving and it's a great option. Um, this one I made today is pretty floppy. Neither one of these are a stiff material. I maybe should have used a stiffer material for one of them, but whatever. When you're choosing your fabric, you wanna make sure you get two colors that you are probably not gonna use at the same wedding or the same shoot or the same whatever you're doing. Just because you can simultaneously shoot on two different canvases, but if the two colors you want are on the same one, you can't simultaneously photograph things. You have to do one or the other. So like, it's rare that I'm gonna have a black and gray wedding. It's usually gonna be black and white or gray and any other color. Um, that is why I put these two together. So, I have here, Emerald, this is what I'm working on, it is huge, I'm gonna have to cut it down. I used to be one of those like, go big or go home, like the bigger styling board the better, but currently my favorite size is 20 by 24 or 18 by 24. You really don't need anything bigger. I used to think I would just take all these bouquet photos on my styling boards, but really, I never take a bouquet photo just laying down, usually because it's not cute from the side, it's just cute from the top. It just looks weird from all the undercarriage of the bouquet. So if you're worried about that, don't be. I'm also, I have this blue. I'm probably going to pair it with this peach color. So those two together. And then I have some neutrals. They're pretty floppy. White, and it has like a pebble, a pebble texture. And then whatever this is, it's like a beige maybe, but it is fabulous. And then I have a taupe color, I guess. I'm being really fancy today. And this one is actually pretty stiff, like, it kind of stands up on its own. This is actually a really good one. I really don't remember where I got it from. Wish I did, I need some more of it. I have a lot of work to do, okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, gird your loins. It's gonna be fun. 
So you're going to start by cutting your Wonder Under and your material to the size that you want your styling board to be. The Wonder Under comes in a 17 inch width, so you have to cut multiple pieces of that. Just be sure that they align as perfectly as possible. Then set your iron to the fabric type that you have. So when you're ironing on your Wonder Under, make sure that the rough edge is on the bottom and the smooth edge is what the iron is touching. This velveteen is stretchy and synthetic, so I put my iron to synthetic. And just a little FYI for velvet, you never want to iron on the front side of it because it can turn out really weird. This is the longest process, and what I've learned is that if you push down with pressure, that actually works much better and quicker than if you just iron like you would any other type of fabric. This part takes practice and I obviously have not mastered it, but if the paper is not coming off of the Wonder Under in one piece, that's okay. Just get as much off as you can and then iron the rest of it to make sure it's fully stuck to the material. Then get your next piece and make sure that it doesn't have any wrinkles in it. Mine had a little bit of wrinkles, so I had to get those out first. You might find yourself dancing. You may also find yourself running out of flat surfaces. Once you have your second piece of material ironed out, you can now fuse it to your first piece. And again, it works a lot better if you apply pressure here. This could take you a while, so listen to a podcast or watch your favorite episodes of Friends, listen to your dog snore, whatever you wanna do. Now it's time to sew your pieces together to make sure they are permanent. Set your stitch width to the zigzag and then your stitch length to a one or a two. I am using one of the cheapest sewing machines on the planet. Uh, I think it was $50 on Black Friday. I'll link below if I can find it. I recommend using a thread that matches your fabric, but it really doesn't matter that much since it won't be in your photos. Once you have sewn the two pieces together, you can apply Mod Podge to keep it from fraying. This gray piece of material is very prone to fraying. You may also need to work out before you do this step so you can open the Mod Podge. If you're using a serger, you can skip this step entirely. That's it, you're done. Well, that is all she wrote. She is tired, she's had a long day, but she hopes you enjoy this video and she asks that you please subscribe to my channel. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm, I've lost it. If you have a question or would like to request a tutorial, please comment below and ask away. I am pretty sure I've covered all of the basic styling board surfaces. We have the textured painted styling boards, the rollable styling boards, this one. I could do textured and rollable if that's something you would like to see. I might do it anyway. Go back next week. I haven't decided. I also need your opinion. Do you want to see a video about what gear you need to shoot weddings versus what is just nice to have but you don't actually need? Or would you like to see me style an invitation suite? The choice is yours. Let me know. I'll see y'all next week. Bye! I have hair in my mouth. Hey y'all. Hey y'all. Where am I from? Can somebody guess? I... <laughs> okay. I got like a fuzz in my nose. Okay, I'm sure that was really cute. I'm back, I'm back. Because they are so thick, um, you can't penetrate Oh. Whew. This reminds me of when I was in elementary school and I used to eat the glue. I turned out fine though. I really did eat glue one time. Just, just 
for the fun of it, my friend dared me, I think. Or maybe I was just curious, I don't remember, but I, I definitely remember eating glue and bubbles. That's what's wrong with me. Mm. Is that it? Surely that's not it. Did I think I forgot something? I know I did. What was it? I know I forgot something. I know I forgot something. I knew I did. She tired. She ready. She tired. She going to bed. Okay.